this meeting with the authorities and diplomatic corps, the mass at the cathedral, and the meeting with the families. It has been a very exciting day. We have been renewed, inspired, and moved. So let's begin the press briefing. Your Eminence. Hello, good evening. Good evening, yeah. Are you still alive? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, first of all, we would like to thank all of you for coming to the Philippines and making this event not only a local and even regional event, uh, but through you, it is really an international event. Uh, I would just like to highlight uh, a few things regarding the, uh, the events of uh, today. First, uh, when the Holy Father went to uh, the presidential residence, no? one thing that was striking was his attention, the attention that he paid not only to the known leaders of uh, the nation and the di diplomatic corps, he paid great attention even to the ordinary uh, government employees who lined up and who were also inside the palace. Again, it is true to form, <laughs> very, uh, very much uh, the, the style, the uh, evangelical, the pastoral uh, uh, approach of Pope Francis to uh, not only to tremble before the powers that be, but to tremble more before the simple and the humble. And in his uh, speech, you know, he highlighted uh, some things that are, uh, for me, quite significant. He affirmed, of course, the need for integrity in uh, public life, in public service, and as a cultural element. This is important for, I think, this is my thinking, Integrity cannot just be legislated. It has to be imbibed individ by individuals and be made part of, of the family tradition, something that must be transmitted by all families. The whole, the whole of society cannot be a society of, of integrity, of truthfulness, of justice, unless those values are assimilated and passed on in the family. And he also singled out the role of the Philippines in Asia, uh, the role of the Philippines in spreading these values to Asia. Uh, and as a pastor, I, I really love that. Then we move to the uh, Manila Cathedral where he celebrated his first mass. Uh, here in the Philippines, and it was a mass that was uh, intended primarily uh, for uh, his uh, encounter with some bishops and uh, religious men and women and the ordained. It, I think it was an opportunity for the Holy Father to remind the, the leaders of the church in the Philippines you know, about things that he has already been uh, talking about like the centrality of the poor. And I love the way he put it. Uh, if we distance ourselves from the poor, if we forget the poor, then we might fail to understand the gospel message. So, uh, if I may use my own term, this is not, uh, you cannot find this in the, uh, in the text. I have not seen the text of the homily of the Pope myself. But uh, I think he is saying that our commitment to the poor, our immersion with the poor, provides a hermeneutical key. No, it's a key to understanding the whole message of Jesus and, uh, and the gospel. And it is a good, good reminder. For me, it, it can summarize the, the whole homily, you know, and uh, all the, the, the invitation to become close to the poor, everything, it, it all serves the uh, the mission of the priest and the religious in uh, being proclaimers of the word. And then this was not part of the uh, official program, 
But after the Eucharistic celebration in the Manila Cathedral, we just crossed the street to uh, a shelter for street children uh, called Tulay ng Kabataan. It, mean, it means uh, uh, a bridge, no? a bridge uh, of the youth. Uh, it is, uh, it's run by a foundation and uh, street children and most of them victims of different types of abuse. They are sheltered there and uh, in that house girls are sheltered. The, the, the foundation has other uh, houses for, God bless you, salute. No, I heard that. And, uh, who is that? Uh, you, ma'am, yes. <laughs> you need vitamin C. <laughs> right. uh, where, uh, where was I? Uh, uh, yeah, oh, they have a, a shelter for girls near the cathedral, but they also have other shelters you know, for, uh, for boys, etc. And they have other small centers spread out in different uh, 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 informal uh, settler communities. And it was a beautiful, beautiful encounter. You could see the Holy Father in his elements. You know, I was translating for him because some of the children uh, uh, tried to tell uh, a bit of their stories, and you could see the attentiveness of the, of the Pope. And you could see his eyes even uh, uh, starting to... Uh, uh -huh. Wow, why am I... <laughs> why am I dramatizing it? <laughs> you see his eyes getting cloudy and... Um, beginning to uh, fill with tears, you know? And you could see he was, he was trying to show his affection to the children and at the same time trying to fathom this deep wounds and pain. And when, he, when, he, uh, when, when the children started coming to him to touch him, he, he whispered to me, you see, you could see the history already, the, the lack of, of, of human touch, how they miss no, the, this, uh, the touch from a parent. No? And so he obliged, he allowed them. No? And then uh, they, they, the children started singing. No? And uh, we asked the Holy Father if he wanted to say a few words. At first he said, no, just a blessing. But he could not control himself. <laughs> so uh, he, he said something. Uh, I translated for him. He, he assured the children that they are loved by God. God is with them. No? and that they should not forget that. And, uh, and he reversed it, you know. Has, is God absent in your lives? And they said, no. Oh, so he said, oh, so you, you understood. <laughs> and then he, uh, he, 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 he blessed them. Uh, some children uh, presented gifts to him. It, it, was, a, it was a really a moving uh, encounter. Uh, and then uh, he went back to the nunciature for a much needed rest. And this afternoon, the uh, encounter with the, uh, the families. Again, you could see he was in his elements. Huh? Uh, he, uh, he even asked uh, uh, Monsignor Miles to translate uh, for him. Yes, yeah, he wanted to add uh, a few more things no, which were not uh, uh, in the text. And uh, he affirmed the value of the family and the, and the obligation, the mission of the church to uh, uh, preserve the family. He, he uh, referred to what he called some col ideological colonialism uh, 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 that seems to uh, destroy the, uh, the value of the family. You know, I, I, then I, I got lost a bit. But I, I heard materialism and those things, so ideological forms of colonialism. And then he referred to Pope Paul VI, now, the courage of Paul VI. And, uh, but it was a very nuanced presentation of the Holy Father. In fact, after, after the speech, I told him it was a stroke of genius, now, which is, uh, again, what Pope Francis is trying to do. He affirmed. No, the teaching of uh, Paul VI regarding the openness of the family to life, no, the sanctity of the family, but then 
he reminded all of us too that Pope Paul VI uh, was very sensitive to particular cases. Okay? So the attentiveness to particular cases while remaining faithful to the tradition. You know? And uh, he, he had a lot of questions of uh, what are they saying? And uh, who are these children that were coming to him? No, and uh, he was just energized. And then coming back to the uh, nunciature when he saw the crowds again, no, he said, wow, the, the, the Filipinos are energetic. You don't get tired. I said, well, said, we are youthful. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that's true. He said, there is a promise there. No. The future of the church is here in Asia. I saw it in Sri Lanka, the youthfulness of the church, the future is here. And uh, I don't know whether I'm the one who's supposed to say it. Uh, maybe I close there and uh, the continuation is with Father Lombardi. Uh, yes, thank you, <clears throat> Eminence. Uh, uh, I think that... Uh, uh, you have said all what is really important of today. I have not very much to add, but I also try to uh, give my perspective. For me, it is clear that this day is uh, uh, a continuous growth because <clears throat> also the uh, participation, the emotion uh, of, of the Pope is, is growing eh? from the more formal important, obviously, but more formal meeting in the morning in the presidential palace to the mass with the, uh, with the companion in the service, uh, more familiar and uh, spontaneous, to the uh, moment of the meeting with the families in which you have really experienced Pope Francis as pastor in his spontaneity and enthusiasm and in his spontaneous spirit of being happy to be with the people uh, with a very uh, easy communication with them. Uh, you have begun to see the, the true and the best <laughs> Pope Francis, I think, this evening during the meeting of the families. And uh, in this sense, it is uh, very promising also for the <laughs> next two days, because if he is already at the top of his <laughs> communication, then he will uh, do still very much with your enthusiastic people. This was the first uh, observation. A little information that I, uh, that I can add about the, the first meeting in the presidential palace, little particular but with a certain uh, significance, the gift that the president has done to the Pope is a wooden Madonna uh, uh, done with the uh, wood of a uh, tree that was destroyed by the typhoon. Eh? And then in this sense is a concrete uh, sign, uh, religious sign that uh, uh, is connected also with the experience uh, of the typhoon uh, and the suffering of the people here. Um, <clears throat> about the, uh, the speech uh, to, the, to the president uh, is a very rich and clear text that you have, read, uh, you have read and I don't need to add something, but is uh, substantial about uh, all the points of uh, the uh, justice uh, in the society, engagement uh, for the right of the people, participation in the society, uh, these equalities uh, to uh, eliminate, uh, and uh, the, uh, the fight against the corruption, as said the, the Cardinal before. is uh, very uh, intense, and uh, there are many, many elements that you can, uh, can read very well. And in the speech in the, in the cathedral also, the Pope came back with a very strong accent about the problem of the poor, of the inequalities. He has said twice, I think, scandalous inequalities. This is a very strong uh, way to, to, to express himself. And 
as the cardinal has said, uh, <coughs> the, this accent uh, um, on the poor is uh, coming uh, again and again. Um, you, <laughs> you can learn with the time to understand better what is the point uh, that the Pope uh, feels more profound, and that is exactly a, uh, <coughs> a phrase that was added by him to the text that was given you in, uh, <coughs> with, with embargo, and the phrase is exactly the poor. The poor are at the center of the gospel, are at heart of the gospel. If we take away the poor from the gospel, we cannot understand the whole message of Jesus Christ. Eh? This is uh, added by the Pope during the homily explicitly, and he had asked his interpreter to help him to say this correctly in, in English, because he desired to, de to say explicitly this message. But in the, <coughs> in the homily, you had also uh, some other important expression like this, uh, uh, <coughs> the challenge to, of proclaiming the radicalism of the gospel in a society which has grown comfortable with social exclusion, polarization, and scandalous inequality. I found this a very strong message for the confrere in the, in the um, spiritual ministry. And also, the appreciation uh, for the Filipinos. Eh? This, uh, uh, this is important. The Pope begins to say uh, many times his appreciation for the Filipino people. And the, during the, <coughs> the homily, he said, uh, Filipinos everywhere are known for their love of God, their fervent piety, and their warm devotion to Our Lady and her rosary. And he has repeated this twice. This is also a sign that is important for him to say this about the values of the Filipinos and of the religiosity of the Filipinos. And uh, this evening, uh, we, are, uh, come, uh, we have come late because the Pope is doing another thing that is a meeting in the nunciature with 40 Jesuit. He is a Jesuit and then he desired normally to have a, a meeting with the Jesuit of the, of the place. And then there are 40 Jesuit in the nunciature now and he was talking with, uh, with them. Eh? Uh, <coughs> they, they said, we are 40 like the 40 elephants in Sri Lanka. <laughs> and those <laughs> the Pope said, yes, but the 40 elephants were uh, dressed uh, yes. in, in a very solemn way, yeah. you are more normal, <laughs> in any case. But the first question that was posed by the Jesuit to the Pope was, what do you think about the Filipinos? And he said, I don't know many Filipinos, but I have met them, in particular in Rome, more than in Argentinian, and I have the impression that they have a natural dignity, eh? uh, more than other people. Eh? Uh, in the, maybe that the profound uh, evangelization that they have received during centuries has given them a profound spirituality and dignity. It is, uh, uh, this was a very deep appreciation that he had demonstrated, and uh, also he appreciated the enthusiasm they show in the, 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 the children and, uh, and the, the, young, uh, uh, <coughs> the young, the many, many, many young people. Well, um, after that, uh, surely a very moving moment was the, the encounter with the children of the street uh, <coughs> of this uh, foundation that is uh, a, uh, maybe that the, the, <coughs> uh, the cardinal can explain us Tulain Kabataan, what yes. is this, what, what uh, means? Tulain Kabataan means uh, Ponte de uh, Giovanni, uh, ah, so ah, is, uh, yeah, a bridge of uh, the youth, or uh, for the youth. The name of the foundation that organizes these uh, houses for the street children yeah. is Tulain Gabatan, that is a bridge for the young people. So okay. it's a sort of, a, a, the foundation wants to provide a sort of bridge so that these young people could walk, you know, to a, uh, to uh, another life, and uh, they can stay in the house for as long as they're studying. 
So they provide shelter and education. Yes. The, the little house where the Pope was uh, hosts, uh, now I have heard, 20 uh, girls. But uh, the foundation has here in, uh, in Manila 320 uh, street children altogether. Eh? This, uh, and this growing, obviously, this very important uh, uh, initiative. And uh, the Pope has recalled this during this, uh, the speech uh, to the families. You have uh, noted uh, this may be a little observation. I was very touched uh, today in meeting the street children in, uh, in Manila. Well, uh, about the meetings uh, with the families, uh, <laughs> it was, it was fast fantastic, I think. It, it was really the, the, the spontaneous expression of, of, of our Pope. I have appreciated very much the organization of this uh, as an uh, observer, external observer. And the, the, the families that were giving witnesses were very touching witnesses, obviously, very, very well chosen, also the death and the, the experience of the immigration and so on. And uh, you have noted maybe that the first message to the Pope was given by a group, a family. Uh, also the intention was given by groups, uh, the family together that were given the, the intention. And the first had an old lady in the middle on the wheelchair. Uh, is a lady of 100 years old. Eh? And uh, <coughs> she has... Uh, uh, six children, uh, uh, 27 grandchildren, 47 grand-grandchildren, and one grand-grand-grandchildren. Yeah, child. Yeah, yeah, four generation in this group. Uh, a very good example of the Filipino family, I think. It was very, very, uh, very good. <laughs> Well, during the speech, as, you, uh, as uh, Cardinal Tagli has already said, the Pope has added something. Uh, this means that uh, he has read the entire text uh, that he had already prepared in English. And you have seen that he is growing also in the capacity to exprime himself with spontaneity in English, but in any case. And uh, uh, if he decides to say something more, then it is a good solution this to speak Spanish with a good interpretation. The people had their yeah. very, very, uh, very, very happy. Um, and you have noted already this point of Paul VI and the, the great esteem that the Pope has for Paul VI and the value, prophetic value of his encyclica, but also his pastoral feeling and attention for the, uh, for the cases, particular cases. As you know, Cardinal Tagra is a great specialist of Paul VI, and then <laughs> he can, yeah, he can un understand very, very profoundly what this is. I, I will stress that this speech um, of today in the context of the process of the synod yes. for the family and uh, the preparation of the World Day of the family has a very important place, I think, also with the two um, points that the Cardinal has already said, that this, the, the, the value of, of the teaching of Paul VI and the very strong polemic against the ideologies that tend to destroy or to corrupt the, the, uh, the family. And he has, the Pope has had a very strong uh, expression, as he said, we were able to say no to the colonization, political uh, uh, colonization. We have to say no also to the ideological colonization that is against our vision of the, of the family. Well, in any case, I think I have said enough, and there, there is time for your question, in particular for the cardinal, I think. Oh, no, for <laughs> Father Lombardi. <laughs> yeah. So before we proceed to the question and answer portion, I understand that we're connected to the International Media Center. I just wish that we could see them here in the monitors, but... Uh, Oh, yes, they're there. So how are you doing? Are you there? 
Yes, of course, Edwin. Good evening. Okay. Uh, good evening, Your Eminence, Father Lombardi and Father Kilong Kilong, ready to ask the questions should you give us the opportunity. Okay. Yes, Edwin. Okay, so this is what we'll do to put some order. Um, we'll first open the floor to, to our colleagues here in the Diamond Hotel. Kindly please state your name and the network that you represent. So who would like to ask the first question? Yes. Good evening. John Neri from the Inquirer. Um, in his homily at the cathedral, uh, Pope Francis once again spoke about the need for the church to examine its conscience, to uh, acknowledge its failures and sins. Two hours before that, the President of the Philippines gave a controversial uh, statement criticizing some members of the Philippine church as uh, having suddenly turned silent in the face of the previous government's abuses. Now, this criticism has, I think, uh, been criticized itself as tone deaf on social media. But I wanted to ask two quick questions, one for Father Lombardi and the other one for His Eminence. Father Lombardi, is this uh, an example of uh, truth speak, uh, speaking to power? I mean, is this, is this something that uh, His Holiness will take into consideration about the state of the church in the Philippines? And then, Your Eminence, was the president in fact speaking the truth about the Philippine church? Uh, yes, for my part, uh, um, the, the, the Pope is always very open to listen to what is said and takes very seriously all what is said and with respect, but uh, obviously he has also to uh, evaluate and to uh, listen to people that can give him advice or, or more information and so on. And then the Pope personally has not uh, a, a, a direct experience of the, of the situation here in the Philippines. And then he listened to the, to the, the bishops, to the priests, to the people that can give him uh, opinions uh, to have a, a, a general perspective. In any case, <coughs> I think that uh, the, the speech of the president, for me, uh, that I am an external observer, was rather original because not, uh, not always there are such a speech during the formal uh, uh, um, ceremonies of reception of, of the Pope, but was also very interesting. And uh, I, I did um, this consideration, yes, you see what is the perspective of a politician and what is the perspective of the Pope? There are two different perspectives <laughs> because one is personally involved in a uh, political uh, process with uh, many discussions. He has also a personal uh, history that is very uh, difficult. Uh, his father was killed. Uh, he was also object of an attack, his mother also. And then this is something that, is, uh, <laughs> that means in, in the life of a person. You, know, you, you are way too experienced the, the history of, the, of your land and uh, also the uh, relation of, of the church with uh, this complex history like the help to the Ethna uh, revolution and so on. Uh, this is uh, something that he has uh, seen and uh, experienced in first person. Uh, and obviously he has a, a very intense participation and can see, say uh, things that involve him personally very much. The Pope is at another level. The Pope is at another level and he has done a very strong and clear statement in the speech that approached, I think, practically all the problems <laughs> that were touched by the, by the president, <laughs> but at a level more general, but clear uh, with concrete words, that is uh, intended to be uh, the, the basis for the common good and uh, to find uh, the common ways for the, also for the politician to build the, the, the renovation, the renewal of the, of the society. 
In this sense, it was for me a, a very interesting experience. The, the, the politician with his passion or with his uh, concrete experience of suffering, of uh, uh, participation in, in discussion and so on, and the level of the Pope that uh, uh, knows uh, uh, in general the problems, but uh, knows the, the principle and the orientation that he has to give to help all and the entire society to find a way toward a better and uh, greater justice uh, and uh, uh, not the scandalous inequality and not the corruption and so on. I found a, a very, for me also, a, a very important experience uh, with great respect for both the, <laughs> the interlocutors. Uh, thank you, uh, Father Lombardi. <coughs> Uh, my first appeal to all of you is uh, uh, while the uh, speech of uh, the president is uh, important, uh, I hope uh, we will not lose our focus on the Pope because the Pope will be here only for a few days yeah. while the president stays. <laughs> and we can uh, continue exploring his speech you know, <laughs> even after the return of the Holy Father to uh, to the Vatican, you know. Uh, uh, also, I think the best person to explain that speech is the president himself. I don't have a copy of the speech, you no. Know, but my impression is this. Uh, I think he, he uh, was coming from, as Father Lombardi already said, from a deeply personal experience and also a deeply political experience. The personal experience that uh, he uh, that that shaped that uh, type of, uh, of 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 interpretation of facts was his own uh, suffering, you know, during martial law, and his appreciation for uh, the church, for the role of the church in uh, during that time. But also, uh, there is the political uh, political dimension. Now that he is president and the Filipinos can uh, attest to this, uh, in many of his uh, speeches since becoming president, he always refers or has referred to the previous administration and how he has inherited some of uh, the problems that the former administration uh, was not able or refused to, uh, to uh, address. And so I, I, I hear a bit of that in, uh, in the speech uh, today. While the silence of some bishops was mentioned, I think it was still a commentary on the previous administration. Okay, so before I get back to you, we'd like to sh shift back to uh, the International Media Center because they may have some questions, then we'll turn back to Diamond uh, Hotel. Thank you, Edwin. We have the first uh, media practitioner to ask the question. Please come up to the microphone and identify yourself and the entity you represent. Yes, please. Hello. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, good evening to one and all. Uh, Your name, please. My name is Bernie Anabo of Metro National Daily News. Thank you. My question is addressed to Father Lombardi. A while ago, Pope Francis said everyone should dream a family. LGBT dreams to have a family. Correct me if I am wrong. Now, what is the exact standing of the church regarding same-sex marriage? And what pastoral attention can be given to that kind of onion? Thank you. Diamond Hotel, please take it away. Yeah, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you. Well, I think that uh, uh, it is uh, well known that the perspective of the church about the family is that the family is based on the union, on the marriage of a man and a woman. And uh, the family is for us the union of the man and the woman and the 
children that come from this, from this union. This is for us the family. Then if there are persons that uh, decide to have a community uh, in other uh, ways that they can do, but uh, this is not for us a family. Thank you very much, yeah. Father Lombardi. This gentleman was raising his hand earlier. Then I'll get back to you, Melo. Yes, please. Okay. Good evening, uh, Mark Zambrano from GMA News. Uh, my first question would be for Father Lombardi. Uh, pardon me if this is kind of a trivial question, but uh, it's been going around social media uh, based on the, observer, uh, the observations of some of the people here in the Philippines when they noticed from the arrival of uh, Pope Francis all the way to when he went to the presidential palace, um, there was uh, an observation made by several netizens about the slight awkwardness and hesitation on the part of the Pope when it came to President Aquino's uh, attempt to kiss his hand or shake his hand. Can you comment uh, perspective-wise on, on protocol? Is there something on protocol regarding handshakes or the kissing of the hand of the Pope when it comes to these kinds of appearances? Because we all know uh, this is also a state visit uh, on the second hand. So can you comment on that, Father Lombardi? Mm. I am not an expert of protocol, to be, <laughs> to be honest. And I uh, think that the Pope also is not expert on this aspect of the protocol. And it is totally different to this. And uh, what is the... the the simple and normal way uh, to approach the other, this is uh, the, 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 the way that he uses. Uh, I, I don't think that the Pope thinks about this, and I also. And then, in the sense, I am not able to answer your question. If someone gives me the hand, I, I, I give the hand. And I think the Pope does the same. And uh, if you take the hand of the Pope and you try to kiss his, uh, his hand, uh, he has a certain resistance. Uh, maybe you succeed, but this is not uh, the, the most normal way in which the Pope desires to be, uh, to be greeted. I, I say, oh, sometimes for me it's uh, spontaneous to, to uh, ask the Pope to, to kiss his, his hand, because this is for me also a, a traditional devotion. But I say that he's not, uh, he prefer maybe to have a simple <laughs> handshake. And I think that uh, it is uh, the is normal way to be. Okay, let's go back to the International Media Center. Do thank you have you. another question over there? Yes, thank you, Edwin. Yes, please identify yourself and the entity you come from. Uh, I'm Teddy Lechadores of Metro Daily News. Uh, my question is addressed to uh, Cardinal Tagle. Uh, Cardinal, now that the Holy Father has spoken against any forms of contraception, what will the church do with the passage of birth control bill in Congress? It's been enacted into law. Your Eminence, please. Yes. Well, we will continue preaching what the church teaches. With or without the law, we continue our mission. OK. Who has the next question? Uh, later, later, yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, question for His Eminence. I mean, yes, in Rao Panorama Magazine, you um, mentioned the, that the Pope reminded the attention of Paul VI uh, to the particular case. Uh, uh, the issue was uh, the contraception, of course. But do you think that uh, this criteria could be applied also for uh, uh, divo uh, divorce the remarried in the perspective of the next synod? Uh, wait. We have a synod. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> preempt the discussion of the synod. But... Uh, uh, at least from the synod that happened last October no, and leading to the, the synod next October. I, I think last October we were given uh, a, 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 a wider picture of the various cases, particular contexts no, of, uh, of marriage. And so, uh, the, the preparation for the next synod 
is already, uh, in a way, uh, mindful, already consider about these com complex, uh, particular situations that uh, people find themselves in. And, and so the pastoral, pastoral uh, response to the different situations will definitely consider what is the teaching and then also the, uh, the unique situation. So in that sense, I think it, it can be uh, carried uh, through to uh, other c concerns or other questions uh, regarding the family. Yes, uh, Melo, do we have another question from the International Media Center? Yes, uh, all right. There's nobody. Uh, Edwin, okay. will you okay. allow me to ask a question? <laughs> brief. Very and brief. And if we can't answer it, you'll have to answer it, Melo. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I just saw the weather update. It says something about a monk. Will the Holy Father push through with his trip to Tacloban and Palo tomorrow? That is the question. No, uh, we are not informed that there are change in the program. The program is the same. We will uh, fly to Tacloban tomorrow with the Holy Father. Uh, this is what we preview in, in, the, in this moment. Uh, I, uh, I have heard that the uh, weather uh, previews are not uh, the best in the sense that may be it rains, but is not uh, a, a really a danger uh, for for uh, for us to uh, for the Pope to fly there, and uh, the people in the Philippines knows what the rain is and don't uh, uh, are afraid uh, about this. I think, in this sense, our program for tomorrow is unchanging. Thank you Thank very you much. much, Melo. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, who has another question? Someone was raising his hand earlier. Yes, sir. The one. Yes. Go ahead. John Allen, Ruxham and Boston Globe. Uh, Father Lombardi, we heard to today the Holy Father refer to the ideological colonization of the family. I'd like to know, did that in part, perhaps not the only element, but at least in part, was that a reference to gay marriage? This is, I think, in part also, yes. Yes, I think uh, there are maybe uh, uh, strong uh, um, um, demographical uh, um, uh, political measures uh, uh, or also a, a, a vision, uh, anthropological vision that comes in law that uh, 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 diminish the importance of the central place of the family in the society, I think, yes. The mm -hmm. gentleman in brown, uh, yes. can you Cardinal please hand over the microphone? Uh, yes. May I add Excuse something to John question, Allen's yes. question? Uh, in the Synod of Bishops last October, the Extraordinary Synod, there were some uh, uh, bishops and uh, lay people, especially from Africa, from Africa, who said that foreign help or foreign aid extended to them uh, oftentimes is linked to some measures that the receiving country is somehow forced to accept. And some of those conditions for the aid seem to be uh, an acceptance or a welcoming of uh, uh, some views regarding marriage or sexuality or what, which could be alien to the the vision of the receiving country or culture. Yes. Uh, over here, uh, I'm Sebastien Maillard from the French uh, daily La Croix. My question is for His Eminence. Uh, this morning, uh, in his homily, the Pope Francis warned against the, I, I quote, the great danger of a certain materialism. Yes. And he was speaking to the priest and yes. to the consecrated persons. Do you take this as a harsh criticism, and how do you understand it? How do you accept it, and what uh, you plan to do? Yes. Uh, I, I, I don't take it as a harsh criticism. Uh, pope Francis is not the first pope to uh, remind 
church leaders of uh, the temptation of materialism. Uh, in fact, even in the Bible, mm -hmm. that is one of the temptations that Jesus himself experienced, the, the promise of uh, getting all the kingdoms of this world, etc. And so it, is, uh, it, it has existed as a temptation. And it is good to be warned, especially in a, in a country like the Philippines and in other developing countries. You, know, uh, you must have noticed that people in the Philippines love their priests. And uh, because of that love, because of that love for priests and the religious, uh, they're very generous to us. And uh, if we are not careful, that might become already a motivation for uh, my ministry. It's not just ministry, but just uh, what can I get in return. And it's a, it's a good reminder to us. Do we still have time for two more questions? Edwin, Any other question from Edwin, the floor? Uh, let me just check if okay, we still have one uh, more from... So uh, yes, any please. closing statement, Your Eminence? Edwin, Edwin. Thank you. And <laughs> enjoy your dinner. And uh, see you in Tacloban. See you all in Tacloban. It's been a, a rare energizing day. We were all moved today. And so have a blessed evening. See you all tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very much. Thank you.